For years, players have made custom challenges to spice up the Pokemon experience, but none have come close to the insanity that is Iron Mon. I'm dead. I lose you counter. Yep. Yep. Ow! No! Oh, fuck! Imagine a Pokemon challenge where you have to fight nearly every trainer in the game, randomized to have stat, abilities, and moves that could all screw you over. And you have but one mere Pokemon to get through it all. It's a challenge that's so crazy that it takes people hundreds if not thousands of attempts to complete. There are four modes to this challenge. Normal, Ultimate, Survival, and Kaizo. I chose to do Kaizo Ironmon. I'll explain a lot of the rules as we go on, but the basics are this. The game is randomized to where every Pokemon's base stats, ability, moveset, as well as the starters, wild, static, and trainer Pokemon, and field items are all random. If a Pokemon dies, it's gone forever. You cannot buy items, though items are permitted in battle. All trainer Pokemon also have a 50% level increase. Also, you can't leave caves and buildings once you enter them. And the biggest rule is that you can only grind on trainers. While Pokemon battles cannot result in fainting the opposing Pokemon, though you can catch them. But this means essentially you have to choose one Pokemon to run through the entire game with. And if it dies, it's over. We have limited TMs, can't use Pokemon over a BST of 600, healing moves are banned, and can't use healing items outside of battle. These are the major rules, though there are a lot more. I will link to a doc with the full rule set in the description, but I will try to explain a lot of them as they come up in the challenge. As you can probably tell, this challenge is complex and very, very challenging. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and if you want more Ironmon content in the future, let me know in the comments down below. What makes this challenge great is that every time you boot up a new seed, you have no idea what's in store. Again, the only items we are going to be able to use are the ones that we find through field items, hidden items, and other stuff like the potion that's in our PC that turns out to be an antidote. Items like these are fantastic because status conditions can be fatal, and you're going to want these stocked up. For the starters, we have completely random Pokemon. There's also a rule that you have to pick which Mon you're going to choose ahead of time, left, middle, or right, as well as you can't have Pokemon above a BST of 600 or legendaries. As I'm a Nuzlocker who also likes Iron I call myself a bit of a centrist, so middle is the choice I go with. Now, when playing this challenge, the first rival fight is where most runs die, just because of how much the level difference actually matters. But luckily for us, we have Magnitude on our Celio, and we're fighting a Magnemite. And as you can see in the bottom right, we have a tractor for our stats, moves, and enemy info. And it turns out our Celio doesn't really have the best of stats. Low speed is usually a death sentence because of how many moves you allow the AI to use. Another big factor for whether Pokemon are good or not is the ratio between attack and special attack. The best Pokemon have a lot in one and not the other, letting the remaining base stats go into other areas. Right now, I definitely don't want to run this Celio, so I'm looking to do what's called a pivot and catch another Pokemon before we fight any trainers. This isn't a Nuzlocke, so I have as many opportunities as I need to catch a Pokemon as long as I have balls. And we can check multiple Mons with this method as long as they aren't the same route. But once I catch a Pokemon, I have to commit to it, so the Pokemon I had previously, I cannot go back to it. The first Pokemon I catch is Land it has some decent moves, but is far too slow to be runnable. On Route 23, we find Seedot, Altaria, then my favorite Pokemon, Skarmory. So obviously, I check it out. And it's actually pretty decent. It has a pretty average spread with Ball Beam and Stab Gust. Now you may be thinking I'm gonna run this, but something you gotta know about Ironmon is that it takes a lot to win the challenge. So I'm still gonna be looking for that perfect Pokemon. And usually you wanna make it a goal to test as many Pokemon as you can to find an insane Pokemon with good spread and moves. Because this challenge takes hundreds, even thousands of attempts for most people to win. So I find the best thing I could find in Verdian Forest in Route 2 and check out Slowking. And it turns out this thing is actually pretty insane. It has a monster high attack stat, with decent physical bulk and good speed. 
We also score an Adamant Nature and Volt Absorbability. The ability in particular is amazing because my special defense is really low, so essentially it's mainly grass and dark moves that we have to look out for. But in order for this run to survive, we need good coverage and utilize our monster attack stat. And another big hurdle for Guinea runs is that the first trainers are pretty tough. They too have much higher levels than you. So for the first trainer, I Aeroblast the Shogun, then finish it off with a Secret Power. Then a Barboach comes out, giving us a lucky matchup and a lot of XP. Thankfully, I didn't run into any fully evolved Pokemon here. The next trainer gave us a tough matchup against a Hoot Hoot, but luckily we prevail. We then slice through another trainer and learn the move Ancient Power, giving us unbelievably better coverage. A high BST Mon and Deoxys comes out, but luckily it only uses Reversal. We then take care of one more trainer and even get to one shot a Mawile on the next one. And we get to learn the move Karate Chop, giving us important coverage against Steel types. We go back to fight the rival with an Aeroblast and Karate Chop. Then we make it to Brock. Again, once we enter a gym, we can't leave. So we take care of the first one with a Secret Power and Karate Chop. And now it's time for Brock, who has six Pokemon. Air Blast kills Cacturn, AP crits Sableye. We also get an Omni Boost, which allows us to swiftly run through the rest of his team with ease. And now this run is looking really good. Also, the only TMs you're allowed to teach are the ones you get from gym leaders, and you have a 50% chance of being able to do so. We get Psywave, which isn't of any use, so we skip out on it. Getting past Brock is a big breath of fresh air, as we can now run through a bunch of trainers until we get to Mount Moon. We also get Rock Slide at level 24, upgrading our moveset. And now it's time for Mount Moon. Since we can only enter Mount Moon once, I make it a goal to go to the end of the cave first. We fight the Grunt who does some damage with Pain Split, which is pretty Pretty annoying as I can't heal that. And then we fight a scientist who goes down easily. We then venture back to fight all the trainers I skip for XP. Luckily my level advantage is starting to give me an easy time. This is one big benefit to a glass cannon in Kaizo. If you have the firepower to rip through trainer gauntlets, your HP has a much lower chance of getting lowered. We also acquire a number of hidden items and field items, and it's important this challenge to stock these up, as during big fights and hard gauntlets, you're gonna need a lot of items. Status heals, PB stores, HP recovery, and other items. Remember, per Kaizo rules, held items besides consumables like berries are prohibited, so a lot of the items we get, unfortunately, will be useless. After Mount Moon, we make our way to Cerulean. Unfortunately, we can't use the Moo Tutors, so we go to the Rival Fight. We choose to fight the trainers north of Misty because the Rival Fight is slightly easier than Misty, and we can go back to heal after every fight. Thankfully, a lot of these Pokemon aren't too strong. We do run into a Kyogre that Aeroblast is able to knock out. We also run into an Entei and a Deoxys but nothing that harms us. We get another move at level 36, though it's only Nightshade. One trainer hits us with a stab at Giga Drain, and you can see just how frail we are to grass moves. We still don't want to do Misty yet, as there are easier ways of leveling up. Clear out some trainers on Route 6, but we run into another Raichu that endeavors me to low HP, but thankfully it was the trainer's only Pokemon, so we're able to heal that up. We clear out some more trainers on Route 11, run into Jirachi with Sketch, then go back to Cerulean Gym, and we make Make quick work of the first trainer, and then the second, and now it's time to fight Misty. Karate Chop kills Larvitar, Rock Slide kills Typhlosion, Aeroblast kills Latios, Secret Power kills Ralts, and finally, Karate Chop takes out Mightyena. And we get the Payday TM, which won't be of any use. Remember, the only TMs we can teach are from the gym leaders. Now the S is Sand. We get some hidden items, then do the Rival Fight first. And I'm very scared of this Raichu, as we've seen it before be very bulky with Rock Tomb and Endeavor. It tombs me once, but luckily I get a Paralysis, and he misses a Rock Tomb. So we dodge an Endeavor, and that's actually really helpful because I would have been low HP for the rest of the SSN fights. So we're able to grind out a little bit more XP, and then get to Surge. We take out the first Sailor, and a Mr. Mime takes my attack pretty well, but it only uses Payday. We then get Pain Split by the last trainer's Banet, which is pretty spooky. After some can interaction, we challenge Surge to a fight. We take out Skarmory, refuse to learn Tail Glow, Aeroblast Nidoqueen, though it does set up Curse, then we knock out Electrode and Blossom, and then Mewtwo comes out with Intimidate, but Aeroblast still was able to kill it. Agron then falls to a Karate Chop, giving us three badges. We then head to Route 9, knock out some trainers, and acquire some items. And now we enter Rock Tunnel, which is a pretty big gauntlet. 
We knock out trainer after trainer as my accumulation of EVs and levels is turning Sloking into a bit of a beast, and we get out unscathed. We head our way to Route 8. We run into a dull battle, and if you're wondering, my Skarmory is only here for HM purposes, and I'm pretty sure the rule is you have to spam Pokeballs with the slot because essentially you're only allowed to be using one Pokemon. If I'm doing this wrong, make sure to let me know in the comments. Now it's time for Erica. I haven't really said this, but I can't express how good the Sloking is. It scored insane attack and has great coverage being able to hit everything neutrally, and it got this early on into the run. We also have great PP on our moves. I did get confused by Swampert, and as you can tell, Confusion self it did a lot of damage, and that's something we really gotta look out for. Now we fight Erica. Rock Slide kills Lapras, Air Blast beats Sand Slash and Starmie, Karate Chop kills Agron, Aeroblast Slowbro, and Rock Slide Aerodactyl. Clean win, and we get Triple Kick, which isn't of any use. Our next stop is Rocket Hideout. We have just about the same strategy as before. We go through to the trainers that are required, then head back to take out the rest. A lot of these Pokemon are only level 18 to 20 in vanilla, so nothing comes up as very scary. We get the Lift Key and a number of items, then take on Giovanni. Seeking dies to Rock Slide, Medichan dies to Aeroblast, Secret Power, Electabuzz, Aeroblast Crit kills Latios, Rock Slide flinches Kingdra, and Karate Chop kills Cactor. Pretty lucky. We can now set our sights on Pokemon Tower. First is the rival. I did miss our Rock Slide against Dodrio, but it missed Toxic, which is insanely good. The scary Raichu is last, and Secret Power gets a Para, which is huge for dodging Endeavor. I then go through the tower, only fighting the required ones, so I can get to the top and knock out the Grunts before returning back down. And no, the heal pad is not legal to use, as well as all healing stations mid gauntlets. I did run into a Sceptile who twin needled me and got a poison, so I was forced to use my one antidote. Thankfully, I haven't had to use many heals up to this point, so we were stocked up. And nothing else I fought gave me much of an issue. So we get out in one piece and acquire the Poke Flute. This item is very good to get, because between routes 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18, we have so many trainers and so much EXP to grind off of. It really is a huge milestone in the run, and it's very convenient because we are allowed to heal in between all these gauntlets. We're also able to accumulate a ton of items. We gain a total of 7 levels from all the trainers, which is huge. And after the grinding, we get to Koga. One of his trainers did live a hit, but thankfully it only hit me with a weak return. The rest of the trainers drop with ease, although I did have a tough time navigating the gym. Time for Koga. I missed a Rock Slide and the Sableye set up a Minimize. Then it lived my next one, but I did hit a higher roll and we took it out. Well, Fable died to a Karate Chop, Electrode lived a hit, but it only set up a Barrier, Aeroblast kills Wobbuffet, Bounce from Grub Pig doesn't paralyze, and Aeroblast kills Venusaur given us our fifth badge. We then give the Warden his teeth back and head down to Route 19, 20, and 21, where we have a lot of trainers to grind out. And you might be saying that with how high my levels are, this challenge shouldn't be that hard. But I will say the level jump will spike greatly soon. Also, another factor to why this Sloking has been so good is it has a medium fast growth rate for EXP, which is great because a lot of the Pokemon that you typically get don't have a huge growth rate. What I haven't shown in this video is all the times I've lost early on due to bad spreads, poor early game RNG, and a variety of factors. So a lot of people that play this game know how satisfying it is to finally get a good Pokemon. But anyways, it's time for Silphco. By far the toughest of the gauntlets we faced, due to how many trainers there are. I use the same strategy of clearing out the necessary ones first, though I do run into a few spinners, but I do decide to do the rival battle early. I rock slide Dodrio, Secret Power Parasect, Karate Chop Steelix, Secret Power Donphan as a stockpiles, but we knock that out, and then once again, the Raichu comes. It seemed like Secret Power was a range to kill, but thankfully it dies without any endeavors. We then go through various floors of Silphco, fighting trainer after trainer, having a killing spree without having too many issues. So I mindlessly start clicking buttons on all the trainers, and I didn't realize that my PP was getting kinda low. By the time I knew it, I was down to 13 moves, and then I accidentally ran into an optional that had 5 Pokemon, and now I was starting to panic. Thankfully, I one-shotted all of them. 
but now I was down to 2 PP on all my moves with Giovanni still to fight. There thankfully were no more optionals I ran into, so let's fight. I karate chop Sneasel, secret power doesn't kill Nidoking, and I get confused. I look through my bag and notice that I have no way of healing confusion. So I just fire off another secret power, but I hit myself. And then I hit myself again but then I kill it after. I snap out on Polyrath, killing it with Aeroblast, and then take out Walrein with a Rock Slide. Dugong dies to a Rock Slide, and finally, Camera dies to an Aeroblast, getting us out of the fight with only one PP left. But we can now set our sights on Sabrina. I never realized this until now, but you can actually just keep going on the panels diagonal towards yourself to get to Sabrina. I go one by one, taking out the gym trainers until I run into a Mewtwo with Intimidate. Thankfully, I paralyze it, but I also miss a move on the Gyarados, so I take a bit of HP. Time for Sabrina. I one-shot Deoxys, then miss an Aeroblast on him only as a tail glows, but thankfully I hit the next one. If I missed, I'm pretty sure I was dead. Blaziken then also tail glows, but I'm able to kill it with a secret power, and the rest die to secret power, giving us six badges. We can then clear out Pokemon Mansion and head to Blaine. I forgot that Caterpie evolved into Metapod, so I gotta fight a trainer. Sceptile is a secret power, so I take a sizable amount of damage. I also thankfully hit an Aeroblast on another Slowking. I then stupidly think there are 9 badges, so once again we gotta get in another fight. The next prompt is if Poliwag evolves 3 times, and I accidentally got it correct, so no XP for that trainer. I also forgot that Ground is immune to Electric, and then this question I honestly didn't know, but thankfully I got it wrong. And then lastly, we all love TM28 Tombstoney. Time for Blaine. Camera dies to Aeroblast. Porygon 2 dies to Karate Chop, I Rock Slide Pelipper, Flyzar lives a Sleep Powder and lowers my speed, and gets me paralyzed, and confuses me, which is frankly just too much, so I'm forced to burn a full restore. Salamence then outspeeds me, but only uses Lock On. And then we take out Ninjask, giving us 7 badges. Unfortunately with the rules, we can't access Sevi Islands, so it's on to Giovanni. There's a lot of trainers in here, all with pretty high levels, so it's it's important I could serve PP and don't get too greedy. Luckily the first few trainers go alright. I did take a poison tail from Electabuzz which luckily didn't poison. Then Claydol soaked up 3 PP alone, but it only hit me with a low kick. The next few trainers go alright. Donphan only used a stockpile, Seasworth thankfully didn't confuse me with Dizzy Punch, and Lantern hits me with a Shadow Ball. But we were able to clear out the trainers with a lot of PP left, though I did have to burn a heal. Giovanni time. I killed Dugtrio with Secret Power, Sceptile dies to Aeroblast, Porygon 2 bone rings me as I decide not to heal, I kill Aerodactyl, and then Slowbro, and then lastly Pinsir. In hindsight I probably should have used a heal. If any of the last mons lived or I missed, I was one special move away from dying. But luckily we were fine. Now we fight the rival. Rock Slide Armaldo, Karate Chop Stantler, Secret Power Claydol twice, Octillery hits me with an Earthquake, Karate Chop Crawdont, and lastly I luckily get a big crit with Secret Power. But the Raichu lives, and it only fires off a weak water gun, so we get out in one piece. After running through the badge gates, we get to enter Victory Road. It starts off well with the first few trainers going down with ease. We collect some items, do some strength puzzles, and a lot of trainer battles. Things were going very smooth until I got glared by an executor. Me being worried about my items for the Elite Four as I haven't picked up a lot of status healing, especially no paralyzed heals, I decide to not use my full heal and exit to the league early. Luckily, because of our Pokemon's build, I haven't had to use many items over the course of the run, so PP and HP shouldn't be much of an issue, though status conditions will be very tough to deal with in the Elite Four. Something that's kind of cool about this challenge is that there's not really any prep that you have to do in between fights. Because of how random everything is, basically all the thinking that you do is just on the fly, which can be a great change of pace from someone who looks at docs and does damage calculations all the time. So here we go, time for the Elite Four. First up, is Lorelei. I rock slide Ledian, then secret power Tentacruel, as it only sets up a light screen. Then I take out Heracross, which dies to an Aeroblast, and Cradilly gets a Mist Ball off, but we get past it. Then my mortal enemy Raichu comes out. I rock slide as he rock tombs me twice, but a Karate Chop crit lets us dodge Endeavor. And finally, we kill Miltank with a Karate Chop. Next is Bruno. I rock slide Camerupt as a Tail Glows, then knock it out. The Pillow Swine is able to get a Fury Swipes on me, and then Agron gets some damage off, and 
and I'm getting a little low, so I pop a lemonade as I go to sleep, and I was taking a lot from Swift, but the sleep only lasted two turns. I knock out Aerodactyl, and this Polytoad proved to be quite an issue. I chose to risk a crit, and then I had to pop a full restore. Thankfully, I don't get paralyzed again, and we make it out. As you can tell, these fights are getting really scary. Agatha was next. The Lapras fires off a massive magical leaf, which nearly kills me. And the Repskin leaves me at 3 HP. So, I pop a max potion and dodge poison from Apom, then kill Furret, Gorobus, Agron, and lastly, Breloom. As you can tell, these Pokemon are doing a great job of matching my levels, and my average speed is starting to show. But we only have two left. Lance time. I kill Sandler with two chops, one shot my cargo, and that Rock Slide almost kills Gyarados, but thankfully I don't get status. Illumise does a ton with Double Edge, so I pop a Hyper Potion, Explode dies, then I Rock Slide Pinsir as it curses twice and gets a full restore proc, but luckily a para then a crit from Aeroblast does the job. One left. Time for the champion. I karate chop Umbreon as it lowers my accuracy, and I notice that I don't have any way of carrying it, so I'm stuck with the accuracy drop. I knock it out, then Mischievous comes out, and right away it goes for Parish Song, the nightmare for all Ironmon runners. All I can do is stare at my screen and hopelessly try to think of a solution. But yet I realize with four Pokemon in the back, there's nothing I can do. All I can really do is hope for Roar or Whirlwind. But yet, it clicks Uproar just to spite me. As my Parish Counter drops to zero, I mourn the loss of my Slowking and how far we came and how close we were to victory. Unfortunately, this is where the journey ends. And no, I wasn't allowed to switch to Skarmory, unfortunately. I must put this run to rest. This was my Fire Red Kaizo Ironmon experience. And if you're curious, this was only my 109th attempt. A very low attempt number to get as far as I did. Honestly, it might have felt too fortunate to win with this low of an attempt number, as people who do this challenge spend upwards of over 2,000 attempts to do this exact same challenge. Coming from someone who primarily does Nuzlocke, I must admit this challenge was a blast. I've been soaking up a lot of Ironmon content on Twitch over the past few months, and it's an amazing challenge. And what I think makes it so great is that just about anyone can get into it. As long as you have basic understanding of the type chart and common sense, this challenge is for anyone. It's very different from Nuzlocke as it's primarily luck based, and there is a skill cap at some point, unlike in high level Nuzlocke play where there's a much bigger abundance of math and problem solving. So really they do both have their respective attractions, and they are very different in many ways. I do hope that there is a lot more Ironmon content that comes out in the future. If you do like this challenge, I highly suggest checking out the Twitch Ironmon community. There's a ton of different streamers playing variety of games and challenges on Ironmon. Regardless, this is definitely different from what I usually do, and if you guys like this video, make sure to stay subscribed, as I'll be having a big Crystal Kaizo video coming out soon. Also, if you want more content like this, make sure to let me know in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching, and have a great day.